If you've been following the recent U.S. elections coverage, then my next guest will not be a stranger to you. She is known for her rich and insightful political analysis and calm disposition. She has been termed a CNN rising star by Forbes magazine, was recently promoted to senior political correspondent at CNN and host of Inside Politics Sunday on the network. We are absolutely proud of her because both her parents are from right here in Trinidad and Tobago. I am, of course, speaking of Abby Phillip. Hello, Abby. Hi, thank you so much for having me on. And congratulations on all your achievements and all thank your you. success. Listen to me, you have created a lot of excitement here in Trinidad and Tobago, <laughs> okay? And thank you for your recent shout out on your mom's Facebook page. <laughs> I'm glad people were able to see them. <laughs> so let's get it right. Your parents are from Sandy Grandy, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. they both are. What was it like growing up in the U.S. with parents from Trinidad and Tobago? Well, um, I was born in the U.S., but when I was very young, my parents moved back to Trinidad. So I lived um, in Sandy Grandy with my parents and mm -hmm. most of my extended family until I was about eight years old. Oh, you, so lived, you lived here? I, I did live in Trinidad ah. for, for many years, but, um, you know, I was very young, yeah. so there's a lot about that time that I don't really remember, although I remember some of it. Yeah. And um, and then when I was eight, we moved back to the U.S., so yeah. it's always been, you know, Trinidad has always been home to me. That's where, you know, most of my family has been for most of my life, and, yeah. you know, when my grandmother was alive, she, um, you know, we lived with her when I was young. So mm -hmm. she was always our connection to back home and she would come to visit us. And uh, luckily recently over the last few years, I've been able to come back and um, and see some of my family who I have not seen in a lot, had not seen in a long time. Yeah. So it's been, you know, it's always been, um, Trinidad has always been like the second home, yeah. you know, because that's where all of my roots are. Yeah. And we lived in America, but it was always kind of like a little bit more as immigrants mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, people having two cultures that you have to live with. So, so let me ask you this. Um, what do you remember of your time when you come to Trinidad and Tobago most in terms of, I don't know, the places, yeah. the food, you know? I would say probably the food more than anything else. And uh, because you can't really, you know, you can't really get the same quality mm -hmm. of food in the U.S. But, you know, yeah. I, I remember growing up for years and years, we would never want to buy mangoes in the, U in the U.S. because it just never tastes the same. <laughs> it's just not the Nothing same. Nothing like picking know? a mango off a tree in Trinidad, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> it's not like, the you know, my grandmother had a mango tree in her yard. Yes. And it was, it's nothing like that. I, you know, I used to dream of mango chow and you just certain things you just don't get yeah. um, in the U.S. And yeah. that's one of them, just the, the fresh fruit. But, um, you know, the bus up shut and roti and stuff, mm -hmm. you always try to find it and yes, you can yes. find it a little bit, yeah. but not it's not quite the same. So I was speaking with Tatiana Ali recently and you know her, her dad is from Trinidad and Tobago yes. and she yeah. says that, you know, but he has a rank Trini accent, right? <laughs> so yeah. she can kind of slip into her Trinidad and Tobago accent. Can you <laughs> do a Trini accent? <laughs> I really, I have to be honest, I really can't. Um, <laughs> it's been one of those weird things about me ever since I was little. You know, when I was a little girl, I had, I was like a Trinidadian girl. I had right. the accent. Right. But the funny thing was that when I was um, a teenager, you know, a good, very close family friend came to visit us and mm -hmm. she brought this cassette tape of me talking when I was a baby. And I listened to that tape and I was like, oh my God, is that me? <laughs> you know, I sounded like my parents. Yes. And I was like, I can't, I just can't do it now. Yes. It's yes. just, yes. I just, my memory of it doesn't, mm -hmm. um, isn't there. But I will say that when I'm, when I'm in Trinidad, I feel like, I feel like I start to get a little bit of it back, yeah. but it's just not the same. I was just I don't going wanna... to say that. I was just about yeah. to say, once you surround yourself with enough people from Trinidad and Tobago, the exactly. accent will come back. I know it will. But 
Yeah. I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will not put you on the spot. You know, I'm really happy to chat with you today because I'm sure you would know that you're an inspiration to many around the world, particularly young girls and particularly to young girls and everyone here in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, so let's talk a bit about you now. You, you went to Harvard University, just like Tati, actually. Uh, what was the prep work like for entry into Harvard University and what was your experience like there? Yeah, well, you know, I, um, when I was in high school, I, I was a pretty good student, but I never really thought that going to Harvard or an Ivy League school was it really in the cards for me. But I had a couple of teachers yeah. who really insisted, they were like, you really should apply. I mean, what's the harm in applying? So, I mean, you know, I think regardless, I didn't, I didn't have a dream per se of going to Harvard, mm -hmm. but I always wanted to be a good student. I studied for my SAT, the, you know, the entrance exam. And um, I had written an essay, actually. And um, it was for a class, my English class. And the essay was actually about growing up in Trinidad. It was about um, really? being, it was about being raised in this multicultural family, mm -hmm. but also just about wanting to remember more about my time there and, and wanting to kind of um, just recapture some of those memories from my early childhood that I don't didn't really have anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was that's what the essay was about. And I'd written it for my English class. And my English teacher said, you need to make this your Harvard entrance exam, uh, entrance essay. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was my personal essay for Harvard. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I don't know if that helped me get in, but yeah. that's what, um, that's part of the process. And so I got into Harvard early. It, I found out in November that I got in and I didn't, um, I hadn't even finished my applications for other schools and I just didn't finish them. <laughs> what do you do? You know, you get in, you get in. Yeah, I, mean, Harvard, I, right? I kind of thought to myself, why would I do anything else? So I just, <laughs> I just accepted. And yeah. um, it was an amazing experience. Obviously it was a huge adjustment for me. I had come from pri public schools all right, my life. Right. and. Um, it was a huge adjustment, but it was great. And I still have obviously lifelong friends from that time. Mm -hmm. It was difficult, obviously, yeah. you know, you think you're smart until you go to Harvard and then everybody else is <laughs> everybody, a genius, yes. you know? Yeah. yeah. And, um, but you know, the thing about that place is that they really invest in their students. And I, I, I wish every student had that experience, but mm -hmm. they really invest in you mm -hmm. and you really can't fail. There's, yeah. it's not an option to fail. Mm -hmm. um, they make sure that every person gets what they need yeah. to get through. And, you know, by the grace of God, I was able to do that. And, and then you become I'm part of an international it. network, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. That mm -hmm. follows you your whole life, with people you don't even know. Yeah. And it's a huge, um, it's a huge advantage of, of being able to attend an institution like yeah. that. How did you decide on your specialist profession and what keeps you going in this space? When I was in college, I, um, I, I thought I was going to be a doctor. <laughs> and I, then I realized I, being in a lab was just not going to work for me. So mm -hmm. I decided to work on my writing. So I started working on the college paper. And that's when I fell in love with journalism. Mm -hmm. I really loved interviewing people. I loved uh, writing. Um, I loved politics. Yes. And, um, you know, I worked on the paper for three and a half years, most of my time in college. And I just kind of said to myself, you know, let me see if I can get a job in this yeah. industry. Because it was at a time when there were not a lot of jobs in journalism. Mm -hmm. And I had an internship at a news organization called Politico. And um, they offered me a job when I graduated. And I said, let, let me just do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, honestly, I mean, I think the way that I have moved forward in my career is just saying to myself, I'm going to do this as long as I can. You yeah. know, if I hit a dead end and mm -hmm. I can't go any further, so be it. But I'm just going to try to do it for as long as I can. And I've been very lucky. Um, I've been very lucky that people have given me jobs and that the industry has yeah. has survived and thrived in the time that 
since I left college. Well, you've been thriving at least for the past 18 months or so for the duration of the election because, you know, you've just been going from strength to strength. And, uh, you know, you co-moderated the seventh uh, Democratic Convention. You've been seen alongside people like Wolf Blitzer and Anderson Cooper, you know, and um, you've just been able to maintain that composure and that calm. How do you remain calm? What's the dialogue going on in your head during all of this? You know, um, I just try to uh, focus mm -hmm. on what is in front of me and I don't try to get into my nerves, you know, because um, it can feel like a lot of pressure, but the, the, the only way I've been able to get through all of these big events is just to think about what's the next thing that I wanna say and what I wanna express and not worry about how many people are watching, not worry about, you know, who's sitting next to you or, um, you know, who's in the other studio. And so there's that, but I think I always have been, um, I, I've always been the type of person who um, I listen first and I'm not a very dramatic person. Some people, if they meet me, they might think I'm, I'm even quiet or shy. I think when I was growing up, a lot of people thought I was shy. Yeah. I'm not particularly shy. Mm -hmm. I just, don't you know if I are you an introvert say, I'm not gonna say it are you an introvert, an introvert. You're an introvert. <laughs> yeah you know what they say like people wouldn't believe that I test as an introvert but what yeah. they say is that people in front of the camera we just look into a box to millions yes that's yeah it. it's just us you know, right and it's and that's actually how, exactly how I think about it yeah. I think about it by thinking okay I'm talking to it's like I'm talking to my friend or my mom or my sister or something. I'm not talking to a million people. I'm right. talking to one person and I'm trying to explain something to them. And so, yeah, I am a, I'm a big introvert. I'm not like, I don't love being in big crowds. Yeah. I don't love a lot of attention. Um, and I think that that's a good thing. It, it helps keep me grounded. I was just help. gonna ask you how you keep grounded in all of this. And when the realization came through that, wow, I'm being seen all over the world. You know, I'm young and upcoming and everyone in every single country was well, CNN, by the way. Right. Uh, it, you know, I'm here on this platform. Has that registered as yet? It's it's registering. I mean, <laughs> I think it's a it's a process. Like yeah. I, the way I think about it is this one. Um, I don't need attention. I don't need people to know who I am. I, I, that's just not something that I need for my soul. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think that that's good. I want to stay that way. Um, I don't think that's going to change because I am an introvert and I really do prefer kind of like keeping it to myself. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, I, I do think that especially as women and as black women, we have to step into our power and mm -hmm. be comfortable being where uh, powerful people are and taking up that kind of space and so even while I'm kind of like I want to maintain my sense of identity and privacy on a certain level I also um, I'm getting comfortable with just saying you know what it's okay yeah. for um, for for people to want to know more about me and I can use that platform for something that's bigger than me and more important than me. It's not really about me. Mm -hmm. It's about all the people who watch me and see themselves in me. And also about um, the work that I that we do here at CNN, which is fundamentally about the truth. It's fundamentally about informing the public. Mm -hmm. And I really believe in that mission. And I think that, you know, if someone else can do it, I can do it. And um, I'm happy to kind of, as long as this is happening, yes. to use it for the greater good if I can at all. I think you kind of straddled my next question, uh, which is what advice would you give to young people looking to have a globally relevant career? Well, I think the first advice that I would give is to not focus on that, not focus on how big you want your career to be, but focus on what you're doing in that moment. I think so many people that I meet, especially young journalists, they obviously have big aspirations and that's really good. Yeah. But I always encourage people, you know, your um, success will follow your work. So do the work, stay focused, be engaged in your job, um, be useful, be helpful, build relationships with people, genuine relationships with people who you admire and who can help lift you up in your career. 
And if you do that, if you focus on what you're doing right in this moment, the success will come. Okay. You know, Oprah is Oprah because she worked for it. Mm -hmm. And every single day she got up mm -hmm. and she does did her job and tried to do the best version of that thing in front of her as she possibly could. And I don't think Oprah, when she was starting out in her career, she said, I want to be a billionaire yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to be a billionaire like media mogul. Mm -hmm. I, I doubt that that's what her aspirations were, mm -hmm. but it happened for her because she was really focused on her craft and on being the best of herself that she could possibly be. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think the only person who set out and said it publicly was Bruno Mars, right? When he said, I want right. to be a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to be fair, there's nothing wrong with saying you want to be a millionaire. But put in but the work. The work is important. Work. You know? Exactly. I can't believe yeah. the time is up. Before I let you go, anything you want to say to the people of Trinidad and Tobago? I just want to say thank you. <laughs> yes, I just want to say thank you so much. I mean, I've been feeling the love all the way over here in the U.S. And, um, you know, Trinidad is always my home. That's yeah. where my roots are. That's where my family is. Um and I love the people of Trinidad and I, I feel your love back at me. And, and I, and I want to just say that, you know, the support really matters. You yeah. know, I know that we know that people are watching and that people are lifting me up and um, not just in terms of viewership, but also your well wishes mean a lot to me because mm -hmm. uh, this is a tough business to be in. And people are not always positive and supportive. And so when people are positive and supportive, I always want to let them know it does not go unnoticed because people out here can try to tear you down, especially mm -hmm. in the political space. Mm -hmm. And so when you have people lifting you up, it makes a huge difference and it means an enormous amount to me. Well, that's what we're doing right now on the Now Morning Show. We're lifting you up. On behalf of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, thank you thank so you much, so Abby. And you know what? I think everyone in Trinidad and Tobago knows that red is my favorite color. But I realize <laughs> you like red as well. So I said, I you know what? I'll wear blue today. I'll wear blue today. <laughs> thank you so much, Abby. Thank and continued you. success. We'll continue to lift you up. All right? And thank hi to you. your parents. I, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> All right. All the best. Continue to be safe. Thank you. Bye. That was Abby Phillip right there political senior political correspondent with CNN. More after this.